the end of the section here, I totally miss that they've cut some new trail immediately out to the right there. Instead, I go up here and they've tried to block off the old trail with a bunch of rocks and bramble and brush. You think I could figure that out? No. No, I can't. Instead, I go through this and I'm trying to figure out, gee, was it uh, that big rainstorm we had that made all this here? No, it was the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Listen to that horrible chain slap. I apologize to Beta and to all of you. I will fix that. I thought the chain looked okay before we headed out. That was not correct. Inside there, the upper body was taking a beating, and I assume that's because the front end was not quite acting right, it wasn't plush enough. I wonder if, uh, as I said before, that is a tire pressure issue, or maybe I need to take a little more rebound down. Uh, let's see if I have a little bit more progress to make in that one adjustment. Try that for next time. does make you pay, and today there was no rest. clicking and dragging is getting out of control. I gotta watch that. Again, a symptom of just being a little bit off and by this point, really tired, which I don't understand. We're not that far into the day and I'm already making those kind of super tired, silly mistakes. I'm guessing it's because I'm old and out of shape.
Actually, here's another one coming up right here. You'll hear it. I think I hit this guy on the left. Yeah, just that little metallic sound as the spring clicks the foot pipe back into place. Sooner or later, you know, that's that's going to bite me. And of course, here at Foxborough, like, it, this is like, you get no rest. You get no break. That's beta 300 there, no clutch at all. Alright, here we go, one of the toughest climbs on the loop. Let's see how we do. Definitely multiple times faster than we've ever ridden. I've ever ridden here. And it's just it's not wet. That's a huge confidence builder. Like not worrying about every rock, every root, sliding, you know what I mean? Right. Alright, water and then get going because it's hot as hell. <laughs> Notwithstanding the constant complaints about the heat and uh, the setup, it was dry. And that did make a huge difference, especially in sections like this. Really rocky, but you can just get right through it. Yeah, Rich is right. You totally plow through this stuff. back there was some serious target fixation. I was headed right for that thing. And then, of course, since it's Foxborough, immediately after that, really gnarly, twisty part, the beta completely bails me out. So yes, thank you, beta. All those days in the rain were fun, and as it turns out, worth it. This fire road dumps out into a really fast climb right at the end here. I enjoy it, not the easiest, even in the dry. Flying W. After uh, this little section here, there's a left turn, and it's a good example of a place where I really need to just get on the gas and fly over stuff. I take it a little too slow. Here's the left. See, I take it a little too slow, and I'm kind of having to deal with these one by one and taking the hits. When I do it right, I gas it through there and like fly over all that stuff. 
Now right after that, there's a turn in the trail. You take a right right out here and watch this. Oh, really, <laughs> man. Did I mention I was asking a lot of the front end? Now you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely asking a lot of the front end. Man, I just turned the handlebars and prayed. That was not good planning. I got away with that one. Toward the end of the lap here, I am definitely getting a little wiggly and sloppy. Uh, I better pull it out of the hat because there's one really tough climb at the very end. This is not looking too promising. We are going to stop at the end of the lap so Rich can check his pressures, maybe go up or down a little bit. But uh, here we go. Let's see if I can pull this off. was kind of uh, an interesting part of the lap for me because it sort of started to dawn on me that I felt maybe the cross trainer was a little, I don't know, small, a little outgunned today. Got to be a combination of how I'm riding and, uh, and the bike, of course. But is it possible that I'm actually really missing the KTM 200? Hmm, interesting question. God, was that another peg scrape? Are they rock feelers or foot pegs? What is going on? You can see now that's an error of probably an inch and a half at most, maybe two inches. But I'm making that mistake again and again and again. Just getting a little too close. That's that lack of precision I was talking about at the beginning. And that can cost you. That's the lap in the books. Let's see what Rich has to say. We'll go up and check our tires. Nope, oh, Rich. Rich doesn't have anything to say. Yeah, the tire chat was good. Rich, very happy with the tubeless, and I talked him into going down another pound in the front. Although he did say he felt like he had a flat front tire. Now he'll definitely get a flat front tire, which I think is pretty funny. Jump off the old rock there and uh, head back into our loop. Thanks, Rich, for the ride. Although, you know, every time you ride someone's 250 TPI, you do run the risk of having to go out and buy a 250 TPI, especially one with tubeless. So, sorry, so little uh, time I ride Rich's bike, it does feel like I've taken a leap from whatever I'm riding, which is usually a semi-dated model, into the future, which is to say a current model. And it should feel that way because that's exactly what it is. The chassis is a little sharper, no vibration from the motor, plenty of zip, and really just nice plush suspension, especially with the tubeless. It's really good. 
Another thing I noticed today, more than more than usual, uh, a lot more room in the cockpit, the uh, the 200 versus the cross trainer. It's a nice, comfortable place to be. quite happy with what Rich has put together on his bike and as you go as I go through this next section here it's pretty rocky it's it's a little wet but it's some big roots just watch the front wheel just straight through as I go over the roots and rocks no deflection here just exactly going where I'm pointing it that's to me what gives you the big confidence to really up the speed and just enjoy your ride more I'm going to hold on to Rich's bike for just one more little climb here. One thing I'm really curious to see. Here it is. colors that is a tricky loose little climb and this thing just went straight up right where I asked it to nice control really enjoyable yeah we fixed it yeah right totally completely different bike really nice it is really nice I wanted to hold on to it up just through this climb yeah because I was sure it was gonna be good really nice yeah well, let's switch back because I know that's tiny, so. Raises that confidence level. It's it just fun. plow, it just tractors through everything now. So smooth. Yeah. I'm gonna put my bike down right there. Yeah, what you wanna do is bring your idle way up and then drop it. Just another pro tip for you there. Man, the chain slap is brutal. I, uh, that was a bad oversight on my part. I'm surprised I got that one that wrong. But uh, as we'll see in a moment, really chain slap is like the least of my worries. Yeah, I don't have enough ground clearance for that, I guess. That right there. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, I guess I should have uh, 